Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Although, technically, we're not reacting to anything, and we're not being critical of anything, so it's not really another episode of Critical Reactions, is it? It's just another episode of something on the Critical Reactions channel. Whoa. Anyways, instead, we're just going to look at some music that I really loved from last year. You may have noticed the title of the video says my favorite EPs or something along those lines. I haven't finalized that. Editor Brian can take care of that in the future. It, it is true. We're only going to be looking at EPs for this video. You see, I originally had 31 albums in my album of the year list. All the stuff I, I loved from last year. And I tried to pare it down, something a bit more manageable. Last year's video was about 14 or 15 albums, if I remember correctly, and I couldn't. I re-listened to all the albums, and I was like, yeah, that one's fantastic. Gotta highlight that one. I don't even need to replay that one, because it was just fantastic. And just, I couldn't remove any from the list, so... Well, that's when I noticed Anthony Fantano had, like, five or six videos for his 2003 recap, and I figured if multiple videos was good enough for him, then it was good enough for me. And that would make it so I don't have to cover 31 albums in a single video, and, well, geez, that'd be really long. So this just feels more doable. Today we're going to be covering my favorite EPs. The next video will cover all of my favorite tracks that I classify as fun rides. And the third video will cover everything else, heavy art, beautiful soundscapes, and the eternal spins. Those albums I just could not stop listening to. So, with all that said, let's dive into this and explore some of the EPs that I enjoyed that were released last year. I'd like to kick off this video looking at some of the debut EPs from last year. Bands releasing their very first stuff. The first one I want to look at is from a band called A Mile West with the EP 403. On their Bandcamp page, they self describe as metalcore post hardcore. And at first, I didn't quite understand where the overlap there was aside from the obvious element that they both come from hardcore, but I feel like the two genres go in different directions and actually find a really great way of melding the two. We have some really strong melodic sections from primarily the vocals giving us great hooks. However, the guitars also get some really cool lines, both in more metallic riffs, but also in post-hardcore melodic passages. Bringing the two together works really well, and the drums sort of bounce back and forth between a pop-punk style drumming and something more metal, uh, that driving, high-intensity, high-tempo stuff. Not only does all of this work really well for me, but there's also two vocalists, so really the icing on the cake there. One vocalist, at least to me, appears to do only harshes, and the other one has a harsh but primarily does cleans. Both of the vocal styles, to me, feel more at home at post-hardcore than metalcore, but I could see the harsh vocal also working well for a metalcore band. The band does a fantastic job of moving between more melodic passages that allow them to present a more emotional, atmospheric side of things while also dancing back and forth into a more aggressive metalcore sound. As I mentioned earlier, they do have melodic passages in the guitar work while also having some pretty standard metal riffage going on in other passages. All in all, it's a fantastic combination of the two sides and reminds me heavily of the 2000s, which I'm sure that nostalgia pulls me into it even more. Let's go! 
The 2020s have been an era of genre mashups. We have heard some wild combinations of sounds that may have been explored previously, but artists are really going ham these days on this stuff. And this is one of those artists. We're looking at Cinnamon Babe with the EP Fatherless. It's a combination of new metal and hip hop and alt rock and riot girl and a couple other rock and metal oriented sounds. The artist has been fairly busy putting out several singles in 2022. Some of those stayed as symbols and did not get carried over to last year's EP. And even after putting out the EP last year, they still got another single out for last year. It's wild how much music has come out in such a short amount of time from them. Musically, there is a lot of bass heavy elements. It's very rhythmic and textural, but it does bounce between heavier energetic sections and more laid back drum and bass ideas, balancing out some of the metal and the hip hop and the rock ideas. Lyrically, it is a heavy album. Go into it expecting to talk about sex work and the way that it's looked down upon in society and the way that women are typically treated as lesser than men in several different ways. Each of the songs tackles a different subject and an angle on it, although she does find a way to kind of create an anthemic element in some of the songs that almost feels like taking some of the ways that she's spoken about negatively and finding empowerment through it. Interestingly enough, for being a smaller and new artist, she actually has a feature from Otep on one of her tracks. Oh, yella can't be shot. My bark can't be sold or bought. Ain't your little puppy on your lap. Because I'm the big bitch that won't take your crap. I buy back spit out sharp bones. My obedience can't be owned. She's untamable wild beast. Tear rock your chains on in the dirt as a twerk on your grave picking up your scent as a spit on your cake the name on my collar i can't escape big man what's a lick be afraid so you want to see a bitch got a mouth got a muzzle full of sick my eyes roll back to your ass screw loose i'm untrainable i am what you say so you want to see a bitch taste blood next up is labyrinthine oceans with the album The Deep End. In my notes, I wrote Fantastic Atmosphere, Gloomy Rock. Yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate. They have very heavy, dense soundscapes. They're dreary, they're moody, there's a ton of compression. But what's interesting is that those words I would usually describe post rock, maybe post metal to an extent, shoegaze. What they create with this sound is not much like any of that. There's certainly a shoegaze inspiration here. There's an influence from it, particularly with the type of compression that they use throughout this track. But I'd say it has more in... More in comparison to grunge, lighter alt-rock, psychedelic music even a little bit. It's... It's an interesting down-tempo mix of dreary weight. Musically, there's a ton of really great bass lines in here, and the drums are powerful yet laid back. They can't have that forward momentum without losing the, the slowness, the dreariness, the weight of everything, but they want to make sure they have impact as well. And there are some pretty neat guitar solos in here that I think lean a bit more on the emotional side of melody writing more so than anything that is technically impressive though there are some really nice parts of the guitar solos i still think that they they stand out as emotional writing and it tends to augment what the vocalist is putting out with their melodies which tends to lean into the weight and dreariness of it. There's a tiredness to the vocalist delivery that I think is compounded by the atmospheres that they create with this.
Has anyone been looking for some catchy black metal? I know I have. At least I've been trying to find some black metal that works for me. I may have found it. In Low Heaven's Collapse. Black metal is probably the wrong way to classify this. It is blackened and there are metallic elements to it, but it's not really black metal as a whole. It's a combination of post-hardcore and screamo and post-metal and some blackened elements, particularly if you're a real big fan of the compression and, at times, those 16th note guitar picks. You're not going to find any blast beats here. You're not going to find vocals that are tucked into the mix, shrieks, anything like that. But there is a blackened element to it. Primarily what the album does is it has these really heavy post-metal wall of sound breakdowns. Real heavy, lethargic, weighty, and it pairs them with a bit more of an openly ambient post-hardcore melodic hook coming from the vocals on top of that ambience. It actually does a really great job of moving between these two modes, sometimes taking a riff that a guitar is playing and slowly tweak the guitar tone over time in order to push it towards one of the extremes in which the band will come back in around this new sound. There's a ton of different vocal techniques in here. We have really beautiful cleans, we have harmonized chords, we have a growl, we have high pitch post hardcore screams, and we have more of a mid range metalcore scream in here as well. If this sounds confusing, give the opening two minutes a listen. Honestly, it is one of the best thesis statements I've ever listened to when it comes to an album. Within those first two minutes, you have heard both of the extremes and how they move between them. You don't get to hear some of the nuance of the way that they combine them, but if you're not on board with those two extremes, you're not going to be on board with the album most likely. So give that a listen to. As I mentioned, there's vocal harmonies. We also have counterpoint in some of these tracks as well. It's just, it's a big surprise for me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as much as the heavier sections aren't necessarily my cup of tea, I think they work really well in contrast. And if nothing else, I'm usually just a few minutes away from a gorgeous clean vocal melody on top of some very dense atmosphere. How much bass do you want in your alt rock? This band, Marchisi, I hope I pronounced that correctly, have enough bass for two bands, maybe even three. The bass in here is absolutely phenomenal. It's drenched in fuzz. Actually, the whole band is drenched in fuzz. It has an interesting shoegazy element to it mixed with the alt-rock aesthetic and maybe even a little bit of indie rock thrown in there. Just a lot of lower fidelity rock sounds smashed together in a way that sounds great to my ears at least. 
the drum work is solid, if functional usually, and the vocals have a nice shoegazy indie vibe to them. I really enjoy this EP as a sort of sampler for the sounds I'd like to explore in future full-length albums. Each song has its own vibe and feel to it, with one being a brighter, poppier throwback sound of rock, another one being darker and grungier, feeling a bit more like the 90s, and one featuring some absolutely sick funky slap and pop bass work. Have you ever heard of a band doing a split with themselves? This album is called Pool Kids slash Pool by the bands Pool Kids and Pool. They have three songs each, but they're the same band. Pool Kids is sort of math rock indie rock, pop rock thing, if you kind of imagine like what if you had sort of twinkling guitar indie rock stuff for your verses and Paramore style pop rock stuff for your chorus, that's kind of a general idea of what Pool Kids is. But for the three tracks that Pool Kids submitted for this split, it's more of like they reverbed and slowed down their own music, which was already a fascinating Thing to do. So much music on the internet is slowed and reverbed these days and they just beat the fans to the punch. The other half of this split though is the band Pool, which is the same people in the band, but a metal core alter ego of them. And it's actually kind of wild just how diverse this group is when you realize that they wrote these pop rock anth anthemic style of music originally did slowed and reverbed drenched restylings of them with new instrumentation and new composition and then also made some ridiculously heavy music as well it sort of blows my mind and it's really difficult to get a taste of this this split technically although i guess it's it's six tracks from one band that's an ep right without giving a taste of both sides. So in an unusual fashion, we're going to play two songs or snippets from two songs of this EP, one from Pool Kids and one from their alter ego, Pool. Rez's It's Not a Phase is a fascinating album to me. I don't know if it's just my introduction to this. Maybe there's a lot of this mashup. I've used mashup a lot today. I think I would just really like this whole mashup stuff that's going on this decade. This is basically 
a pop emo album with a little bit of a metal core side in one of the tracks. But like, what if you made that without drums and guitars and bass and everything was electronic? And that's where this is. I described it in my notes as electro emo. <laughs> it kind of sounds ridiculous and doesn't quite roll off the tongue, but that's exactly what it is. Put the guitar lines that you would typically have, the chord progressions you would typically have in, an, in a pop emo track and put them on synths. Uh, you know, take the drum parts that you would normally have and put them on electronic drum kits and uh, then just sing your normal pop melodies or pop emo mel melodies over top all that and you get It's Not a Phase. The really cool thing here is that almost every song has a featured artist on it and they all bring their own element to it. Every song feels just a little bit different, grabbing at a different type of or maybe era of emo music. And it all works together into an exceptionally cohesive exploration of what makes emo music on a compositional level and explores if you can still achieve those same vibes with a totally different set of timbres. And to wrap this up, we're going to be looking at Terrestria's Aluminal Space. This is a band that's been on the channel a few times. Not only did we check out a single from this EP a few months ago, but my favorites of 2021 video also featured their debut LP, their self-titled one. I am a huge fan of this band, so it probably comes to no surprise that their EP from last year is at the top of my list. One thing I've always loved about them is the way that they marry a post-hardcore melodic style, usually with the vocal delivery also feeling more post-hardcore, with heavier, meatier, crunchier, genty stuff in a way that bounces back and forth between the two, allowing them to have more ambient textural moments and focusing on just gritty, hardcore not hardcore genre, but hardcore sounds, breakdowns, a more metallic feel, and bouncing back and forth between gorgeous clean vocals and absolutely filthy harshes. This EP pushes that even further and takes them to new horizons. There's a focus on more introspective moments pensive sections of songs and even two interludes that I would probably relegate as balladic, maybe not full-on ballads, but certainly going for that slower, more directed and purposeful sound. Many of the songs also feature electronic instrumentation, and there's even an expansion on some of the vocal work. Particularly, I think the harsh vocals have increased in their texture and definition. I think the vocalist has been working on their harshes and it absolutely shows. The cleans are as phenomenal as ever. Uh, there's probably some growth there, but they were already so good to my ears. I, I don't know. <laughs> it, it still sounds good. Um, and it's, it's just a really nice playing around with new ideas. And I think that's what this album probably means to them. It's why there's only three full tracks on it and then the two interludes because they're still trying to figure out what they want to make and where they want to go with this. I think they sound rather comfortable with this direction and it leaves me as a fan and a listener excited to see where they go next.
And there we go. Those are my favorite EPs from last year. One thing that I'm really happy about is that so many of them are debut EPs. Not only am I listening to modern music, stuff that's actually coming out this year, or in this case last year, but also new bands. I'm getting to explore where music is going. Before starting the channel, I was so stuck in what I listened to. I barely checked out anything new, and this is the exact opposite of that, but it's also... It's, it's rejuvenating and revitalizing my love for music as we continue to explore vastly new ways that people are making it, especially with all the genre mashups that, well, ended up on my list this year. All right, so be sure to uh, keep a lookout on the channel. We'll have our, you know, reactions and stuff coming out as usual. Next Saturday, I hope to get the Fun Rides video released. It'll be 15 albums that I enjoyed listening to and were just kind of fun, <laughs> which as I said at the beginning, I, I think I needed fun this year. This is a, a big list for fun rides. And then the Saturday after, we'll be checking out heavy arts, beautiful soundscapes, and the albums I could not stop listening to. Until next time, as usual, remember to be critical and not cynical of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.